Okay, so we've completed our setup for project one for the setup for Tryon. Uh, I've evaluated that the contact is maximized and even all the way around, as well as the natural dentition is equal to that of the prosthetic occlusion or the prosthetic dentition. Uh, I've added a uh, substantial amount of wax around the denture teeth, um, buccal and lingual. Uh, I'm going to probably start, it doesn't really matter which side, but I'll start with the lingual side. And I want a clear demarcation, I mean a definite uh, a difference that lingual gingival margin is equal with no undercuts. Because I'm also thinking of myself that's polishing this case, that I don't want to just start digging below the denture teeth and create a uh, undercut that I can't trim or polish or both, and then I'll end up polishing uh, denture teeth. Now, even though this is for Tryon, I'm still anticipating that Tryon's gonna go smoothly, quickly, and that will be processing to uh, finish. Consistent. There's an external finishing line of my framework. I'm gonna expose that exactly where the finishing line finished on both sides so i've completed the lingual around the teeth i'll start with the uh, buckle side of the free end here i want to expose as much denture teeth as possible uh, elongating this gingival margin to simulate the natural dentition as if it was there and i have the lingual gingival margin or i have the uh, extent of the gingival margin of number four and it needs to be kind of seamless between four, five, six, and seven down the buckle corridor. Nothing's too far out. We've got the same buckle over jet, the same clean, no wax on the teeth. I'm, I have my instrument at about a 45, and then now I'm just gonna clean the excess wax off. You can use the end of a number seven I'm using this old Hollenbach uh, carver. Doesn't really matter. Obviously something not too sharp that'll kind of dig in and something not too blunt that won't give you any kind of sharp edge. I think the Zale carver may be a little too sharp, at least for the preliminary wax up. No wax on the teeth. Now, once I've got the right gingival margin length, I'll go here and then reduce the buccal flange thickness uh, and then try to simulate a little bit of the natural dentition that's uh, the natural tissue that's missing, bone loss that's occurred here. And remember, this is wax trying. I want to simulate exactly as if this was a acrylic flange. I want to replace the bone loss. I'm not going to add too much extra so that you got, you know, cheeks, lip support, like they're giving Botox. And I don't want to under contour it and have collapsing of the muscles of facial expression and mastication down the buccal corridor. I wouldn't carve the, the wax gingival margin in one fell swoop. I'll usually go back and forth three, four times each time elongating it slowly as not to avoid the wax from kind of cracking or splitting. Here I've gone a little bit too low on the back one here. This side was a little trickier to set up. Number five almost ended up uh, a little end to end uh, to simulate the same occlusion that was on number four and then work my way back slightly inside the ridge line on number seven. As you can see, slightly inside the ridge line number seven, maintaining that uh, class one relationship. Reduce the thickness of the flange. If you take too much off at any time, you can always replace it. You can use a toothbrush 
at this stage just to take any excess off. Don't overwork it as you'll just be putting wax from the toothbrush back onto the teeth. But it's okay to use that to take the extra, you know, debris from the wax carving off. This guide plane we pushed back a little bit more. We could even do a little bit more as well. So now the width of the guide plane, meaning buccolingual width of the guide plane is important as uh, not to expose or be exposed, it has to be within the uh, acrylic confines of the partial denture. So framework design around the acrylic retention areas is very important. And again, unfortunately, in the third parties doing the frameworks for laboratories and or dentures seem to miss the boat on that. But nothing that we can't adjust ourselves. So I just heated the wax up a little bit. It made it a little easier to kind of festoon. Carve. Shape. This is for try-in, remember? Now, I'll take the framework off, and now I'll do the flanges. Be careful not to bend any clasps or wires. And here we now we have the denture and wax. I've got a few voids under there, but the denture should simulate that of an acrylic. Uh, partial, meaning the acrylic flanges should be replicated in wax. Rounded, smooth, removing any undercuts here. So it's a nice, uh, pleasant experience for the try and for the patient. The patient is uh, uh, very astute in seeing differences between their old one or feeling things right away. They might even tolerate this try-in for like 30 seconds before they've got something to say about something pinching or hurting or different. And so we need to make this experience. And no matter what the practitioner says, the, dent, the patient obviously now, if they're feeling not heard or they're feeling differences in the wax up, and we tell them, oh, it'll be a little bit different afterwards. Their skepticism is like, well, is it going to be really? Is it going to be like that when I'm done, when you're done? Is it going to be that thick? Is it going to be that sharp? And we want to eliminate that conversation as much as we can with the practitioner and the patient. And we'll say, yes, it is. That is the extension. And yes, that is the contour. And that is the shade, and that is the bite. Now, naturally, they will be in for some adjustments post insertion. And let me just touch this up a bit here. It's a little bit thick. I don't want this to kind of bulk out more then we have to. If it was a wax up for finish, I may leave it a li slightly a little bulkier and therefore I can always contour it with a burr and I'm leaving room for polishing, etc. Now, once we're satisfied with cleaning the wax off, the length of the gingival margins, the length of the flanges, uh, we could go with a microscope or a, uh, a magnification to ensure there's no wax on the teeth, but I'll take a little tissue with a dab of uh, wax solvent and uh, be careful. Don't use wax solvent on the flange, just on the teeth and just using it to take any kind of small film of wax off the teeth. I want these to, you know, be in their uh, high luster as they were when they came off the card. Now I'm using a, a Zale carver or something a little sharper, something smaller, 
to get some of the smaller details of wax interproximally, maybe redefining some margins, usually around the marginal ridge area. I need to clean occlusally of that wax between the, the teeth, between three and four, excuse me, four and five, five and six, six and seven, a little short on this side so I just elongated the gingiva margin. Now be careful with the alcohol torch. Slightly. This could ruin your wax up. So there we have wax up for trying. The dentist will receive the case obviously disinfected. We'll come off the model. Feels nice and smooth. Flanges are round. There's no separator, which is another reason why I don't use separator underneath the flanges. It's wax. Please don't alcohol torch or put anything hot underneath here as uh, that'll alter the fit of the framework. So this is, this is a big no-no. Don't go underneath on the fitting surface now. Even though I got like a little bit of void here, uh, I can either blend it in or leave it because if I add some there, I run the risk of, of uh, raising the the flange off the off the ridge which is a in a which is an inadequate fit obviously it's an improper record so the model will be steamed cleaned wax cleaned articulation smoothed out uh identified and verified and then now it goes for trying